Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video here at Tailman. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be playing with Tord Reckliff's NAIC Charger Dragapult deck. Now, I want to say this deck is an abomination. Uh, it feels like it, it, like you look at it and it feels like it shouldn't work. Somehow it does. And Dragapult adds that new dimension to the deck which Charger didn't have before which allows it to uh, place damage counters, a different attacker, a different weakness as well. Um, so Draclo gives a little bit of extra support, which is nice. Um, but overall, this deck is like <laughs> all over the place. Clearly it worked. Um, I do expect this deck to start showing up at the League Cups and League Challenges that are happening uh, very soon in July. So be on the lookout for that. And I figured it would be a good time to um, to showcase it, yeah. So we have Charizard X, obviously a powerful attacker, Burning Darkness, amazing attack, and the ability allows you to power itself up and also potentially power up Dragapult. Dragapult DX, on the other hand, has a damage cap with Phantom Dive 200. Those six damage counters can set up nicely some damage numbers for Charizard X. So having the foresight to calculate and imagine what's going to happen and place the damage correctly is going to be very key for this deck to work. And then we have the backbone of Pidgeot, Beeral, Cleffa, and Luminion. Now, I'm very surprised there's no Rotom here. It makes sense with a lack of Nest Ball. Um, instead, Tor decided to play a Technical Machine Evolution with the one extra energy that he does have. Generally very surprised at this decision, but with the lack of Nest Ball not being able to search for that Rotom, it definitely makes sense. He's trying to rely a lot more on Cleffa. He's also playing a very defensive style with the Professor Turos with the Pal Pad, so trying to get the best out of uh, Snorlax and Control decks as well. So definitely uh, a lot of synergy there. And then the A spec of choice, we have the Unfair Stamp to be able to disrupt even further. So a sort of very defensive style of deck um, for Tord here, but also understandable. I also like the 4-2 split with Arvin Iono because you have the Unfair Stamp essentially as that third Iono and you have the Pal Pad to recycle Ionos as well. We also have Temple of Sinnoh to deny the effects of Legacy Energy, Gift Energy, and Mist Energy, all of which um, are beneficial for you. And Collapse Data, of course, to get rid of any sort of liability on our bench. Defiance Band to help increase the damage. And then a 5-2 Energy Split. Uh, only two Psychics, that's fine. Dragapult is not the main focus, but it is a cool um, asset to have. So I think this deck, to do it justice, we need to see it in action. So let's jump some games see how we do all right so let's see if we can make this um <laughs> monstrosity work so remember this is charizard with dragapult and that's a melton so <laughs> not sure how competitive this is going to end up being right but could be a test for our improvisation right as we see the second melton hit the field are we gonna make it three we're gonna grab a beldum i don't even know what mel metal ex or the regular do uh well there's a mew so there's some semblance of trying to <clears throat> draw cards right and do something um Fire Weakness, I'm guessing Radiant Charizard is going to be pretty impactful, but I generally have absolutely no clue what to expect. So we're just going to go for our usual game plan. We're going to get our Puffin, we're going to get our Four Seal Stone, have the Beebrel. We prized one Charizard, I do believe. We have our Dragapult, we did prize the other Dream Beam. Pidgeots are available, Charizard is there. Um, this deck doesn't play Rotom, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just quickly... Yeah, it does not play Rotom, so we can't price something that <laughs> you're not playing. One Fire is priced as well, so just double checking. Definitely um, haven't had the most experience with this deck. I do have Luminion, I can go get a Norman, I have the Four Seal Stone as well. So definitely want to establish the 60 HP Pidgey, because I generally have no idea what to expect. But I'm going to take a gamble 
and say my opponent's not playing something that's gonna threaten the bench. So we're gonna assume <clears throat> that the Pokemon are safe, at least for now. There's a Melmetal EX, which search your deck up to two basic Metal Energy cards and attach them to this Pokemon, then shuffle your deck, and then this attack does 30 more damage for each Metal Energy attached to this Pokemon. So, I mean, generally not horrible, right, with Metang. I mean, is this better than Dialga? I uh, don't think so. Has a higher base damage output, but it does not have a V-Star, right? So I'd rather have 20 less HP and have the V-Star. But hey, who am I to question this? Now we do top deck the Arvin. So I can Arvin for Ultra Ball, plus whatever else. And then I can Luminion. So I'm pretty sure I can get all the pieces. Actually, I don't even need to Arvin for an Ultra Ball now. I can Arvin for a second rare candy. And I mean, sure, let's just go grab another Arvin now. Are we ever going to need Professor Turo? I doubt it. <clears throat> Definitely no, I can discard the Manaphy. But yeah, this will get me the Pidget, which is pretty great. And. Yeah, Arvin for the other rare candy, probably. I mean, I could Ultra Ball the Arvin, but I kind of like the Arvin next turn for a potential Buddy Buddy Puffin. Um, I mean, I could get Ultra Ball instead and then just get rid of the TM Evo and the Manaphy. That actually seems like a better plan. I'm not gonna use the TM Evo at all. And so we can do this and then in theory, this is going to be a two-hit KO, so we're just going to be trading attacks, right? At least for now. Uh, trading two-hit KOs, I mean, if they can get to a one KO. I haven't done the math, but my intuition <laughs> tells me that they're not going to be able to pull that off. Now, I'm only going to attach two energies here with this Charizard, just because I don't want to overcommit, and I do want to have some available for later. So I could attach the third to the Dreepy. Maybe that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, you know what? Never mind. I will be attaching all three. Two to the active, one to the Dreepy. I feel like that's gonna be a, a decent follow-up to try and get a few extra prizes, try to apply <clears throat> a little bit more pressure. Uh, like over the course of two attacks, I can get an extra prize card. Now, let's do the math. 10 energies is 300 plus 90, 390, that's too much, so 8 energies. 8 energies would require a perfect 4 energy metal maker plus attach for turn. So, feeling pretty good. <laughs> feeling pretty good about my chances here. Don't think I'm getting KO'd anytime soon. And I mean, I've known to be wrong before. Right, so it definitely could happen. Just making sure I have that list open to reference because I don't know 100% by heart. Seems like we're gearing for a two hit KO, that's fine. <clears throat> Iono, we appreciate the extra three cards, even though we do lose the Arvin. We're gaining another Arvin, which is still great. We have the Dragapult, pretty awesome. Uh, I could even, well, yeah, I could. I could go for the Professor Turo play. Um, well, no, I'm one card short, actually. I need Rare Candy and a Psychic. I can only quick search for one. Uh, it wouldn't be terrible at all, that's for sure. But, I mean, this is a two-hit kill war, and I have the initiative, right? So, I could just retreat, right? Take the KO, pressure them a tank, then I get attacked, then I attack them, KO them a tank. And I get KO'd back. And that's fine. But that feels a little wasteful, honestly. So... Alright. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna Arvin for Poffin for Bidoof. And then I'm gonna play Collapse Stadium. And, I mean, they're gonna discard a Melton, which is fine. They might 
make a mistake and discard bell them, but I really want to get the Luminion off the board just in case things get out of hand. They don't have that easy to prizer right there for the foreseeable future. You have to imagine it's a Melton, right? Um, well, it turns out it's a Mew, which I don't mind too, too much. And there's a Mosquito being extremely annoying. All right, so we're gonna get the Track Cloak. And we get that's one extra card, which is a Psychic, that's fantastic. Now, yeah, let's commit it. And then we go 180 KO. So far so good, two hit KO trades, I get the first KO. Now, this is definitely a key turn though, because they don't need to attach a lot of energies. So they're gonna get two turns of potentially double Metal Maker to gear up to the one hit KO here. So that is something uh, to keep in mind in order to Oh, wow, nice. <laughs> One of three card combo. Very nice. Um, all right, so I get an Iono as well. Not super useful. They are playing Heavy Baton, which I like. So in an ideal world, I could go Superod, Rare Candy Charizard, Bench the Radzard, knock them out, right? That would be the dream. How realistic is that? I don't know. Also gonna run out of attackers, it seems. Well, never mind. There's the other Mel Mel Metal EX. Uh, it's starting to look a little dire, honestly. Not gonna lie. They're able to. I mean, no matter how many energies, I think spreading them is wrong. Actually, um, just com fully commit. Um, but we'll see, right? So. 200 to the mill metal. I mean, they split the energies. How many energies do they even play? Six, 10, that's 13 already. Assuming this is like the same structure, we've only seen one soup rod, which could be problematic. There's a bunch of non energy cards at the bottom of the deck. So, Iono seems pretty reasonable here. Um, Beaver also seems very reasonable. All right. So, what I could do is go Dracloak. No, I can't actually. Well, I could maybe if I get the right commission cards. Like, if I get Boss KO. Boss KO and Metang, that severely reduces the chances of them KOing me, right? And I can still get two prizes over the course of two turns. That might be the better play. So if I'm going to do that, then I wouldn't mind getting Arvin for Ultra Ball. So I'm going to put two Arvins back. I'm going to start with Industrious Incisors. All right, yeah, so change of plans. Oh, wait, never mind. I need Boss. What am I saying? All right, I get on first stamp. Not really relevant at this point in time, uh, but hey, why not? Let's give it a try. Five cards is a lot. All right, no boss, do get Arvin. Also get Turo, which is pretty useless at this point. To get the Ultra Ball, so that gets me there. Now I can go Ultra Ball, boss, KO, Metang and place the other six damage counters. That's pretty lucky. That is honestly pretty lucky. I mean, I had decent outs, I guess. This definitely feels a lot safer. Overall, now I can go quick search, get boss, KO Mitang, and place the other six damage counters. And then all I need is one more attack which I could even do with Pidgeot. And once again, this is to protect my Dragapult. There is a universe where they could go um, Metal Maker, four or three plus attach, right? There is a universe where that does happen. But how likely that is, I've minimized the odds, right? But if they had double Metang, hitting three energies total between two and an attach per turn, 
that seems pretty more likely overall. So we'll see. Now, I also have the option to go Radzard KO. If they do KO me, that Supra does increase the chances. They do need eight, right? We did the maths, eight times four. I mean, eight times three is 24 plus nine. That's 330. They do get double Supra. So if they're gonna have a chance, this is how it happens. One card in their hand, is it a Superod or is it an energy metal maker? Do they hit all four? I'm nervous. I am very nervous. <laughs> the suspense. The suspense. What's gonna happen? Hello? All right, they hit two. So, depending on what's in their hand, it might have been one off. That's perfectly fine. We are good to go. Operation Dragapult was a success. All right. So, we're gonna put back one Charmander and two Fires. Wait, did I already free up the Charizard from the prize cards? I actually don't remember. I mean, I have Ratzard, right? So if I haven't, I generally don't remember if I unlock Charizard DX from prizes. If I haven't, that's fine. We'll find out. I guess we will find out. We have not, okay. <laughs> that's okay. I could unlock it right now, right? Which is good. And uh, I'm obviously not going to Turo. I mean, I could Turo just to get more cards from Beeperl. Actually, that seems fine. Let's just get the Drippy, rebench it. Industrious Incisors for three. We got a Fire, which is great. And we got the other Suprod, so now I can actually just put back the Charizard EX. And with Quick Search, this should almost be game over, right? I mean, they have boss KO Pitcher DX. They also need to retreat, which they can afford, right? They actually can afford, but if they do that, then I just Arvin. All right, I'm going to super run back the Charizard right now. And a Luminion just because. And then I have energies. I have, yeah, I'm good. We are good. I'm still going to attach, but we are good. If they knock out Pidgeot, I go Arvin, Ultra Ball, KO. Um, KO the whatever Mel Metal is active because I'm going to be doing 300 damage. So we're good to go. Charizard X. No. All right. So Charizard X, the second copy remained in the price cards. That's fine. I mean, generally, if there was a V Star attack happening somewhere, getting an extra turn, like right now, right? There was merit. Um, like, it would have been a lot more threatening, for sure. Uh, my opponent also could have had the opportunity, depending on how my board looked, to establish, um, to use Mew against me to get that potential extra prize at some point. So, I don't know. Definitely don't think Melmetal EX is better than... Um, then Dialga, so until rotation next year, like I've already seen people that are worried about rotation today, right? We had rotation two months ago and they're already thinking about how their deck is going to rotate in the next rotation, right? So it's like rotation just happened. Enjoy what we have right now. There's like, I can understand that feeling two months from now, not 10 months from now yeah the next rotation if it happens in april again it's 10 months away <laughs> so chill and play dialga don't play mel metal the x but in the future that could be the way that metang remains viable or we get other metal pokemon so um there was no v star for us to deal with in terms of star chronos the extra turn but uh we found a different path like i still went essentially two 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 right However, I was able to do it in a way that protected me and decreased the odds of my opponent being able to get exactly what they needed. If they had been able to find four energies off of that Metal Maker, they would have turned things around. So props to my opponents. Let's play one more. All right. 
an extremely uncomfortable hand, right? Uh, we are going to get mulligans, which hopefully helps. We are up against Lugia, so uh, an awkward start against them, never a good thing. Uh, no Rotom to have some sort of draw. We do have Luminion, we do have Forest Hill Stone. I could use Radzard to just evolve into like Dracloak and Charmeleon, perhaps. I can't evolve into Pidgeotto, right? There's no Pidgeotto on the list. All right, my opponent does start. Iron Hands does go first. They did win the coin flip. <clears throat> I wish there was some sort of marker to like who won the coin flip or at least whose turn it is, right? Um, or who's gonna go for it. I don't know, something. A visual showcase of what's going on. There's, there's also so much dead space, but anyways. All right, we see the Luminion probably for Carmine, I have to imagine. Yep, there's the Carmine, so can't play that supporter on the first turn, unlike all the other supporters. And that's a lot of cards lost. I'm glad the Thornton is gone. I'm glad the Jack is gone. Archeops, unfortunate. Please flip heads. No, dang. <laughs> we were rooting for heads. So my opponent wouldn't be able to get that Lugia down on turn one. Um, I'm glad the Thornton is gone. Thornton is always something that can cause havoc overall. And <laughs> I did not just top deck the only copy of Charmeleon that would have actually given some use to my TM Evo. All right, well, B Brawl it is, I guess. And I priced the Drac Cloak. <laughs> uh, okay, so priced Drac Cloak, priced no energies, also have the Temple. So prize drag cloak, prize I can't believe I told Big Charmeleon. <laughs> prize one Iono. Drag cloak Iono. Uh ooh. Wait, I prized three Ultra Balls. No shot, I prize yep, I prized three Ultra Balls, alright. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So we're going to puff in. Uh, I mean, do I really need Dreepy here with this setup? I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to go for the Dreepy. I'm going to Charmander Pidgey. <laughs> I can't believe that technical machine. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not even expecting a KO next turn, probably. Dang, if I could get the Charmeleon, I'd be, like, pretty set here. Alright, I think I have to go for the for the other Puffin and just get b -Brow. It's like the only way I get to actually do something. Could do it with Ultra Ball at the cost of something, but then that would open up the... The draw, discard, uh, I mean, I could discard Charmeleon and a fire, put them back and then immediately go, oh, that actually sounds like a plan. So I'm going to go grab my only Ultra Ball in the whole deck. That is crazy to say out loud. <laughs> Just for Bidoof. All right. TM, Evo, Radzard. Not the most common strategy you're seeing right now. <laughs> if I burn knocks out my Bibrel or my Charmeleon, I am pretty dead. But hey, it's what we have to do, right? I could have held the hand, kept the uh, kept the Forest Seal Stone, gone for Iono. I feel like this is a little bit like better pressure overall, right? It's like, hey, look out, opponent. I'm trying to do stuff. <laughs> uh, this is also where I wish on first stamp was Prime Catcher. That way I could potentially knock out Luminion to start things off. And maybe Radiant Charizard, like starting Radiant Charizard is a blessing. That I don't know though. That I don't know is definitely a blessing. Um... But yeah, starting Radiant Charizard is almost a blessing. Why? Because... Um, it's not in range of getting empty very much, 
So that's pretty good. Now you should be using capturing aroma before you play the jet energy. My opponent doesn't care and will be able to go read the wind right here. Not bad. All right. So the only way I'm doing any significant damage next turn is by finding Professor Turo, which seems like a very big stretch. I also can't really thin out the hand very much at all. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give up on the on the tree bee. I'm going to fail the puffin, bench the Charmander. Actually, I can retreat this turn, right? Never mind, I don't need Turo. It's going to be costly. Wait, can I? Yeah, I can, I can. So I'm glad I attached to the Rats Heart. I mean, I needed to. Uh, I'm glad I discarded the Charmeleon. So big commitment, big energy commitment for sure. I already played one Super Odd and um, I'm going to lose these three energies right about now. All right. I'm going to go ahead and collapse Tatum away my own Luminion. I think that's pretty important. And we're going to go ahead and 180 damage the Lugia. So not bad. Not bad. That went from what is this hand to... All right. Very costly, but we got the attack off. Now, it's very likely my opponent will be able to get Lugia, double Archeops in play. If they, thanks to Collapse Stadium, if they make any sort of mistake by benching anything else, um, we don't know if they're the Mincino version or just the, Min, uh, sorry, Sinchino or Sinchino less version of the deck. They get the two Archives down, they don't have space for anything else, right? I don't have a boss to punish that. That gift energy is not a great sign for them. Yeah, all right. There is. Ooh, not even gonna try. Oh, there, what? <laughs> All right, so the Collapse Stadium did so much damage. Two Sinchinos now gone. Oh, I knew it was Sinchino. That's the third Sin. Okay, never mind. There's no Sinchinos worries. We've already won this game pretty much. And now my opponent evolved. I'm hoping they have a Stadium in their hand. Otherwise, that was a pretty wasteful evolution. But yeah, we're pretty good here. We took away the three prize liability from the Iron Hands. We clearly don't have to deal with Sinchinos at all anymore. So we're good. I think like we're still at six and six prizes, but I'm feeling very, very confident that we can win this one. Already. And yeah, I mean, that's part of the Lugia experience. <laughs> I know a lot of people really like the deck i also like the deck but it's just the starts the starts are just so so awkward so much of the time it's just like and i mean this of course doesn't account for my point evolving the active which was a, a genuine mistake i would say um because now he can't uh summoning star he might have forgotten about the collapse stadium but now uh sorry they can't summoning star and they have to wait for me to get a ko and now they also have to find another lugia v star right not gonna play the temple just yet i don't think there's a need now don't get me wrong my hand is pretty bad honestly um i'm hoping i get an ultra ball here to unlock my hand he took his ultra ball oh and the other super was prized so that was actually really really good um price draw to recover energies for future poco uh, pokemon <laughs> what was i gonna say for future pokemon and also for potential recovery but i'm feeling pretty good uh this delay is either my opponent doesn't know what to do or they've rage quit <laughs> honestly it's a 50 50 at this point i mean you have to go with the lugia right you could go in with Luminion. I actually don't mind that. Uh, you get your double Archeops, and then you go for it. I feel like my opponent should have taken the risk. Just discard the Lugia, hope he hit the V-Star. Hope they hit the V-Star. I would have been fine. Um, Cause like, if you don't hit at that point, the game's over anyways. At this point, the game's over pretty much. And with no Sinchinos to threaten me, 
I'm feeling very confident. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that promotion means my opponent must have swiped away their app, um, rage quit with command quit or alt f4, and we're just gonna get the win, right? So, um, I mean, this deck that has so many moving pieces ends up somehow working, and I feel like clearly we're not learning anything from what the Charizard versus Lugia V-Star matchup dynamics are, right? But I feel like in those early hands where things are awkward, right? How you get the most value out of your cards is super important. And I think that's where a lot of games are won or lost in the sense that um, making the optimal play, and I'm not saying I make the optimal play every single time. I make a ton of mistakes in my videos or whatnot, but trying to maximize the value of your cards, taking the risk, right? Of going into that BRL, making the uh, executive decision to go for that ultra wall to get the more to get more value out of the tm evo get more value out of that charmeleon that i ended up unf uh, unfortunately drawing getting the bbrl and then risking it right if your opponent gets the knockout uh on your single charmeleon you're probably not winning that game anyways if you uh go for puff and bench another charmander and then you're in top deck mode so you have to take risk sometimes and i think that's uh the biggest takeaway from the second game but anyways hope you enjoyed that's gonna be it for this uh, Tor Dracliff special featuring a Charizard Dragapult deck. And I'm thinking about making the other side of the coin, which is Michael Pramod's Dragapult Charizard deck. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in watching. Thanks so much for the support, and I'll see you in the next few videos. Bye.